and 12 of them, four and a half. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Listography. Crams are here with Joe, purple version, and Jason, normal white balance. And it is time to discuss our favorite albums of the year, 2015. All right, coming off 2014, which was a bit of a curveball year for me and maybe a couple other of our lists here. I loved 13. 14 was a bit stepped down. And to me, 15 is a step down from that. I could probably say, to be honest, this is my least favorite year since 1990, specifically for the volume of great albums. I only have 13 albums, four stars and up, which is unusually low. Almost always get to the 20 mark, except some year in the 80s, which kind of thinned out after the masterpieces. So this one was a bit of a struggle. And some things you would probably expect me to have like up there just kind of fall at like three and a half. Really good. Not quite great for me, Um, but 2015, objectively a year where I think pop is still um, pretty decent. I listened to a lot of pop albums around this time and then 2016, the year after. Some I really like, some I couldn't stand. So yeah, a bigger portion of my album's catalog is pop this year more than most. In the news, you've got not a whole lot. Sam Smith is the big winner, barf in my opinion, at the Grammys. But album of the year goes to Beck's morning phase. And I always think it's interesting that the Grammys always have like their little non-mainstream indie darlings that they love to kind of be like, see, we we get it. We're kind of highbrow. We're not just a television show. And they Beck is like their personal favorite to go with, I feel. I think he's won prior to this. Yeah, I don't know what it is with Beck. And the Grammys. Um, What else is going on? Um, The big thing in music geek world is the release date is officially changed from Tuesdays to Fridays. And I was so inept about this. I even thought up to last year. Um, I I mean, I've always listened to albums, but never like expected the release. It was always just kind of what's been out. And I literally, at some point last spring, asked Jason, I was like, why is nothing coming out on Tuesdays? And he's like, oh my God, it hasn't been like that for years. And so I was always my whole 2015 on to 2020, about five days behind the curve, but that's cool. A couple of tragic passings, one with Scott Weiland, who is performing with the Wildabouts, is found dead in Minnesota. And B.B. King, blues guitar legend, passes away. Also, in the Billboard hits, you've got Blank Space, Taylor Swift, Uptown Funk, Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars, See You Again with Wiz Khalifa, Bad Blood, Taylor Swift featuring Kendrick Lamar, Cheerleader, Oh My, Can't Feel My Face, The Weeknd, What Do You Mean, Justin Bieber, The Hills by The Weeknd, and Big Year for Adele, and Hello, for sure. And I don't know if this this is like equivalent to like a Bill James micro baseball stat, but for music nerds, um, Katy Perry's halftime show is the most tweeted per second concert performance ever. Not bad. Yeah. That's like when you say, you know, on bobblehead night away games, so-and-so is hitting left-handers while it's overcast at 380, which is career best. Very minute detail. Good for Katy Perry. Not a Katy Perry fan. Um, But weirdly enough, none of those big hits are among my favorite pop singles of the decade, really. So I've made my opinion on this year pretty clear. What do you guys think? I love this year. It is this 2015 was the first year, I think, ever that I listened to over 100 albums, you know, new albums that year. Uh, After kind of getting back into music in 2014, I went hog wild in 2015, listened to 130 or so. I don't know why you don't like this this year, because I have 32 albums, four stars or above. Very much looking forward to this year. One of my top since probably 94, I'm going to say. I really like it. Um, somewhere in between the two of you. I definitely don't think it's a bad year at all. I think there's a lot of good albums, probably like an average year for me. I don't think it's exceptional, but I think it's about what most of the years in this decade have, have been. And I like this decade a lot. So it's, it's a solid year. Yeah. I've got a lot of good albums, but 
the great territory just kind of falls flat and some disappointments like you would expect me to have honeymoon by lana del rey up there the courtney barnett album that everyone loved doesn't quite get there for me all three and a half miguel has a cool album wild heart that doesn't get there beach house's album doesn't get there so it's just like the cusp of being great but i'm just holding off can't get it there tame impala currents three and a half but who's starting it off i guess that would be me i love this year like i literally just mentioned i got a whole bunch of good albums and a lot of like a bunch that i wanted in my top five so i had to go through my my top 12 or so all the four and a half to five stars and yes there are four five stars in this uh, uh, year probably my favorite ghost album isn't gonna quite make the cut meliora i love you honey bear from father john misty which i really like not gonna quite make it the waterfall by Mor my morning jacket ends their run of three consecutive albums in my top five and then it really gets tough at the top the last cut is going to be Brandon Flowers with the desired effect. His very excellent solo effort. My, probably my second favorite, um, The Killers branded near adjacent uh, album. I think it's probably a five star effort, but gonna just miss cause there's a couple I like more. Uh, so rounding out the bottom, I got Purple by Baroness. Again, Baroness keeps keeps making my list. This might be my favorite of theirs. It's a little more mainstream, a little less sort of Viking shouting. Try to get a little closer to rock music on this one, and they nail it. It's great. Also on my list, Cramser mentioned it, that he didn't think it was great, but I do. Wild Heart by Miguel. It is one, it is raunchy enough to make Prince blush. There's some songs on here probably the dirtiest song i've ever heard on like a mainstream album so but it's great uh some prince vibes and everything from him i love miguel he won in 2012 with kaleidoscope dream and he's back but not quite winning this year also on my list my best girl carly ray jepson with emotion uh, i think this one won for me originally the year i just was smitten immediately with this Canadian songstress, very sort of 80s pop, really like it. And uh, she will appear again. And the top two was tough. Oh, went back and forth on this. Two of my favorites, two albums I still listen to. Can't say that about a lot of albums through the 2010s, but these two I put on multiple times a year. My runner up and Again, The Bridesmaid for BC Camp Light. How to Die in the North is going to be number two. I love it. I love his quirky sort of offbeat humor and pop styles. Little Brian Wilson, just a, a great artist. He was my runner up in 2020 as well. well. My winner is going to be, and I don't know if you guys would ever uh, expect this from me. I'm going to go with Neon Indian. <laughs> Vega International Night School from Neon Indian. This is not like a style I generally gravitate towards. It's sort of like sleazy electronic disco. A lot of electronic samples, a lot of like 16-bit synths. So bleeps and bloops. Some bleeps and bloops, but unlike the bleeps and bloops I don't like, these are like sexy bleeps and bloops. These are like the bleeps and bloops of a computer that was in like the sleaziest nightclub in Vegas that came alive and started just knocking out some sick beats. You know, it's, it's a little sleazy. There's, there's a lot of titles. It's like Glitzy Hive, Slumlord, Dear Scorpio Magazine, Smut, Street Level, very like neon drenched. Might even be too sleazy for Vegas. It's like Atlantic City maybe. Um, but all the beats are super danceable. I love the, the song construction. You know, there's, there's songs that sort of just like end and go into other songs and just like transform. But the songs are all really melodic. They're really catchy. Uh, he has great influences that he brings in. Of course, there's a little bit of Prince in there, which I think everything sounds like Prince, but definitely some Prince on the final song, uh, News from the Sun. 
some cool guitar on that one. And I, I just think it's great. It's, it's really just one of those albums that transcends its sort of genre. Like, he, I mean, Neon Indian was sort of like a chill wave guy at first and some like 80s pop. But uh, this one is just like sleazy, cool disco, kind of beyond any particular uh, era. So really like it. And he hasn't, of course, he hasn't released an album since. Still waiting on that, Neon Indian. So if you're out there listening, please give me a follow-up to this. My favorite album of 2015. Did you see that coming, Jason? See that coming at all? No, not definitely not. All right, 2015 is, for me, the year that I left Pittsburgh. I moved to Philly. So 15 and 16, a lot of the albums from these two years, I have like strong attachments with like they immediately make me think of Philadelphia spent a lot of time, like exploring the city, walking around with headphones on listening to a lot of these albums. I think 16 is a stronger year though. Um, but some runners up for me are going to be highlights by tan lines out calls only by Donald coming, which I think is a really cool solo album. He was the lead singer of the virgins. Um, another one by Mac DeMarco is kind of his, long ep short lp whatever it is but it's really good be small by here we go magic what for by toro y moi sprinter by torres feels like by bully escape from evil by lower dens self-titled album from natalie prass and everybody's a good dog by diane coffee but my top five are going to be a lot of my usual suspects turning up in the top five. I've got If I've Only One Time Asking by Daniel Romano. For me, this is my favorite of his really like classic country phase. He absolutely nails it. A lot of artists nail this sound, but he nails the songwriting too. I mean, these songs sound like they came right out of the 60s. Really good. I've got Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit by Courtney Barnett. I think it's much more than a 3.5 star. I love it. I love her humor, her storytelling, just her way with words on this. The lyrics are fantastic. I've also got All Your Favorite Bands by Dawes. This is my second favorite album of theirs behind their debut. David Rawlings produced this one, which I think really complements their style. This one seems a lot more off the cuff and more relaxed and more spontaneous than their previous efforts. I've got I Love You Honey Bear by Father John Misty. Fantastic follow-up to Fear Fun, although I think I still like Fear Fun just a hair more. But my winner for the year is going to be Cool It by Sam Cohen. I've talked about Sam Cohen a fair amount on the channel before. I mentioned him in our Underrated Guitar Players video. I also think he's a very underrated producer. He was the man behind... Apollo Sunshine and Yellow Birds. And this is his first uh, record under his own name. It's really cool, really spacey, kind of sort of psychedelic guitar rock. His guitar tones are amazing. He uses some like crazy synth pedals that make his guitar sound otherworldly. A lot of times you're like not even sure if it's a synth or a guitar or what's really happening or what you're hearing. Sonically amazing, but I think the songs are there also to like support just the amazing sound. Um, there's some really good songwriting, like Unconditional Love, I think it is an amazing track. But yeah, he's he's produced records for Kevin Morby, Andrew Combs. He has, I think, a, a label or a production company or something like that with Danger Mouse. Um, he did the Man in the High Tower soundtrack, uh, which had a lot of cool covers on it. I just think he's awesome. I think it's a great record. So yeah, that's my winner for 15. Very nice. Um, yeah, the Courtney Barnett five-star lyric album, for sure. But I don't know. The songs just don't stick with me. I, th I just think they fall a little flat. I think the album just sounds a little flat. You agree, Joe? Yeah, I totally agree. I never quite got the praise for that one. Really just kind of boring other than her lyrics. Just not, not that interesting. I think it's really good, but I don't think it's got enough musical composition to back up how good the lyrics are to make it a great album. So two thirds majority rules punk. My, uh, yeah, so I feel like this is the weakest year among the three of us. And again, like every year is good. We love music. So I'm perfectly happy listening to all 29 of my three and a half star rated albums. I, it's still a good day to me. Still really good albums. But some of the stuff that just missed my list that I was really considering and 
really trying to find if it was going to be the fifth spot or not. Um, one that I thought Jason would mention, Ivy Trip by Waxahachie. I like this probably the most of what I've heard from Waxahachie. I definitely like it more than the one that came out last year, which I thought was really good, but kind of overrated. Uh, that one for you, Jace, right? St. Cloud? Okay. Um, and then one Jason did mention that I didn't think I thought I would get all of the uh, praise for being the one to mention this one, but the debut of Natalie Prass by Natalie Prass. Really cool, like just it's kind of weird, like really sweet, almost old school, like I don't even know how to say it, like Loretta Lynn, like sweet Disney infused kind of thing. It's just very cool. Um, and then the one that made my number six spot just missing the cut is I Love You, Honey Bear, my father, John Misty. So we all like that one a lot. I don't know if I like this more than Fear Fun. Pretty close. And I don't know if he's got enough to really do a discography, but soon he will probably. And then we can do that. So here's what I do have. First, I've got Art Angels by Grimes as a nominee. Really awesome. Might like it more than Oblivion. It's a little crazier and more wild. It's just kind of throwing everything against the canvas and seeing what happens, which I like. Um, I've also got Believe I'm Going Down by Kurt Vile probably my most nominated artist of this decade so far. Um, not quite as good as the previous two, but still great. Um, and then I've got To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, which Joe will be surprised and delighted to see. I don't think I've had a hip hop album nominated since the 80s. And the only one in the last 25 years to even come close was Mob Deep. Um, but this one is great. It's really cinematic. Every it's, you know, there's so many people on it, so many guest appearances, and every song is just like really different scene. And I like I like the sound a lot with all of like the sort of like jazz and influence on it very cool and then my final spot is an artist that i don't talk about a lot because i don't love i think is kind of overrated but i like but there's no denying how great this one is and that's going to be carrie and lowell by sufjan stevens really the only album of sufjan that i think is great i think all the other ones that get a lot of acclaim are a bit overrated but can't deny this one it's really awesome kind of folky and ghostly really good ambient production behind some really well-written songs but my winner is going to be The Desired Effect by Brandon Flowers. So in a week year for me, kind of going back to my tried and true trend of this decade, which is like remastered perfect pop rock with like a modern 80s kind of sound, which apparently is my bag so far in this decade. Um, and this one is great. Yeah, I'm probably with Joe. This or Hot Fuss, if you're going to throw in his solo stuff with all the killer stuff, it's right there for me. This is a really good album where you would think on the first couple of listens that the production is just kind of the star in the show, but some really good pop rock songs uh, here and really cool feel and kind of message about the album. Um, it's kind of this like George Michael's flamboyance meets like Springsteen's middle-class America kind of vibe to it. Songs about like balancing romance and your nine to fiver, following your dreams, giving up on your dreams, reflecting on uh, middle-class childhood, blue collar romance, us against the world kind of feel. And the songs themselves are just really good. I love just how acute the production is and really good details. They kind of use every trick in the book and every instrument in the book for a while. One song in particular, Between Me and You, I think has just immaculate production. There's like some Peter Gabriel style, little like, or Fripp style, little like guitar parts in it. There's like funk beats that just come in and out. Really nice mellow piano. On the song Lonely Town, he, for like one verse going into the chorus, uses a uh, auto-tune just for that. Like all of these little things that just kind of fill up your mind and just like it's never a dull moment on this album. I think it's great. And I wouldn't say he has a great voice or even really a great singer, but he's really smart about it on this album. Like knows his register, knows what to do. Really good at communicating. I think it's a great album. Surprised Jason didn't talk about it. Um, but yeah, that is my number one. The Desired Effect by Brandon Flowers. Uh, that is a really good record and really underrated. No one ever talks about it. It didn't really even get that much love when it came out. It was my number five in 2015, but it slipped out a little bit. I figured you would talk about it, though, so I, I let it go. I feel like I should flip it with purple now just to have a little something. Something to bring us together, Ryan. You well, spoke we so eloquently about it. 
Thanks. We got some glue there. We all love it. Father John Misty, we're gluing on. I like yeah. the Grimes, too. That's my favorite Grimes. It's a, no, I mean, it's a top 20 for me in a very strong year. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's just like her crazier album, which I kind of like. But yeah, Desired Effect didn't get any love on any lists, but in classic Rolling Stone fashion, Keith Richards' solo, or solo album that year is like number 18 or whatever. I, I haven't listened to that, but I can't imagine how good it is i don't know i I'm, I'm just starting to like i make my list and then i look back at rolling stones list and man like the nostalgia bias on their list in this decade is just absolutely out of control like if you have been around for 40 plus years and you record yourself coughing and or sneezing it's a pretty good effort they remembered how to plug in their electric guitars so it's automatically like a b plus and let's go from there I can't get behind them. They're, they're losing their mind. It is It is a little sad. I noticed that a lot going through these best of year lists. Like every single year has like either a, you know, a Bono or a U2 or, or like a Rolling Stones. Tom Petty, I think, is on every year. Neil Young makes a whole bunch of lists. Bruce Springsteen literally every time he puts out an album is in the Rolling Stone top 50. Because they, you know, they want him to do a cover story and take some cool photos of them so they gotta throw them in there oh he's so photogenic anymore with his man tan so looking great kind of surprised jason didn't go with uh star wars by wilco or do you not care about that one too much yeah i don't that's kind of i won't say they jumped the shark there i thought they were but they came back with their last record of joy which i liked a lot more than the two before it but yeah, not not crazy about Star Wars. Yeah. Rebel Heart by Madonna, not a very good album in my opinion. That made Rolling Stones top 50. Like it just the list goes on and on. But let us know if you think we're wrong and these um, you know, these classic artists, you think these are still among the best albums of 2015? Let us know what your favorite albums of 2015 are down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Um, and then stay tuned for our Artist of the Week starting next Tuesday. Next Friday will be 2016. And then pretty much just a month's worth of Album of the Year after that. And that'll pretty much wrap it up. And we'll be sad to see it go. Thanks again for tuning in. And we will see you next time on Listography. Take it easy. Take it easy.